buy Bitcoin? Have you already bought Bitcoin? Have you auto dca Have you done recurrent purchases? Have you bought the fucking dip? This week, or actually to be precise, the last seven days have been, if not the most, but one of the most exciting uh, week or exciting last seven days in my entire life. I'm a proud father, as I've already announced in my previous talks. Uh, my my, our daughter was born on January 7th, 2021 at 834 AM Central European time. Her name is Mina and we are really proud parents, really happy, she's healthy, she's well. So yeah, let's get into the reflection of Total Bitcoin. My name is Kevin Navani, welcome to the show, to the Total Bitcoin podcast show. I'm also the host and moderator of the Total Connector show. The most obvious thing, of course, the price of Bitcoin. Let me screen share before I forget it. <laughs> so the market price fiat denominated, hopefully we're not gonna, you know, think or act in fiat denominated terms in the very near future. We will think in purchasing power. Anyway, the price as of January, January 14th, 2021, it's around two, 2.23 p.m. Central European time, the price of Bitcoin in Euro uh, denominated, uh, fiat Euro denominated is around 31,730 euros. So I'm not sure what it is in US dollar. Yeah, in US dollar, there it is. It's 38,460. Uh, so I'm usually used to Euro since I live in Austria and European Union. Hope you all guys doing really well and just buy the dip, I'll do DCA. And if you see a dip, just buy the dip, you know, that's all you can do. Otherwise, you know, just small incrementally buy, buy, buy. Anyway, let's start with the most ridiculous statement <laughs> coming out of the mouth of the most hypocritical criminal, criminally convicted former IMF chief, Madame Christine Lagarde. There's a new article also of, from January, uh, from actually from today uh, on zerohedge.com. It's called ECB's Euro European Central Bank's Lagarde, or Laguerre, I don't know how to pronounce it, calls for global regulation of reprehensible Bitcoin. Now we're gonna get to our history, of course, just in, in short. The president of European Central Bank, Christine Lagarde, has called for global regulations on Bitcoin, labeling the cryptocurrency reprehensible. Um, now, Lagarde made the comments during the Reuters Next conference early today, during which he asserted that Bitcoin was not a currency. When you look at the most recent, that's a quote, when you look at the most recent developments upward and now the recent downward trend for those who have assumed that it might turn into a currency, terribly sorry, but this is an asset and it is a highly speculative asset. Well, of course it's still speculative. It's a monetary evolution. It's, you know, it's been like 12 years and it's done a, an incredible evolutionary, uh, you know, journey until now. And speculation and volatility is part of the price formation of the price discovery and of becoming, you know, the truly global money with a, you know, store of value, medium of exchange, unit of account, uh, global reserve asset. So, of course, anyway, Bitcoin uh, and in Reuters, uh, Reuters says Bitcoin has conducted some funny business and some interesting and totally reprehensible money laundering activity. That's a quote by ECB President Christine Lagarde said at the Reuters Next conference. Now, as I said, you know, she's a convicted uh, uh, felon, uh, but without, any, without being punished, no jail time, nothing. The former head of the IMF, International Monetary Fund, that is, who was previously found guilty of financial negligence by a French court over a $403 million arbitration deal in favor of businessman Bernard Tapier, went on to accuse Bitcoin of, of being heavily embroiled in criminal activity. Bit, uh, quote, 
by Lagarde, Bitcoin has conducted some funny business and some interesting and totally reprehensible money laundering activity at Lagarde. And then the article goes on, the ECB had went on to call for Bitcoin to be regulated by financial authorities. And another quote by her, there has to be regulation. This has to be applied and agreed upon at global level, because if there is an escape, that escape will be you. The article, since it's very pretty short article, let me just read the, the last paragraph. Globalists and technocrats have long begrudged Bitcoin because it is decent centralized and therefore impossible to come under the control of centralized financial institutions. The cryptocurrency, it's also, you know, actually it's, for now it should be called crypto asset. Uh, it's the one and only crypto asset. Anything else is shitcoin. There's Bitcoin and this shitcoin. As uh, who was that? Congressman Warren Davidson said. The cryptocurrency has also provided refuge for dissidents who have been deplatformed by regular financial services and institutions over the politics. Bitcoin recently soared to a record high above $41,000, but has since fallen back to around $35,000. Now, again, it's back again to, uh, as of January 14, 2021, it's uh, 2.30 p.m. Central European time, and the U.S. dollar uh, denominated Bitcoin price is at $38,640. So let's go back to the article. It says, um, after the cryptocurrency previously hit a record high of above $17,000 at the end of 2017, actually it was maximum uh, 20,000, but okay. Uh, it then sank back to around $3,000, emphasizing the wild volatility of the asset. However, numerous analysts are predicting that growing debt, record money printing and hyperinflation could see Bitcoin soar into the hundreds of thousands over the next year. There's another um, a tweet by Joe Weisenthal on Twitter. Bitcoin has already clawed back much of its losses from earlier this month. As you can see, you just need to zoom out, you see? And if you zoom out even, even bigger and bigger in you know, uh, years and, and back to 12 years back, you have a, you know, this is not a bubble. This is not tulip. It's an, this is a scarcest, hardest money has ever been created in human history in monetary evolution with a total cap, with total absolute scarcity of 21 million. Every Bitcoin is, can be divided into, uh, is, uh, can be subdivided into 100, 100 million Satoshis or Sats. So, uh, so if you, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's the sort of the total misconception, I don't know, or a stupidity of a lot of mainstream economists um, or, or people, mainstream people uh, who say that, you know, because it is, you know, uh, you can subdivide it. So of course you can subdivide it even bigger. But you know when you when you have a pizza and you and you cut it into eight pieces, you have eight pieces. You don't have more pizza. That's it. Or if you you know you can cut it into sixteen or or even into a thousand pieces or uh, atomic level. But you can you do not increase the volume or the weight or you know or or uh, the total is the total, right? So I guess this is something that most people don't, a lot of people don't get. Oh yeah, MicroStrategy has announced uh, Bitcoin for Corporation. It's sort of a, a conference call or, you know, advisory call. MicroStrategy is the first publicly traded company to invest significant treasury assets in Bitcoin. At world.now, you will hear from MicroStrategy chairman and CEO, Michael Saylor, as well as a slate of BTC industry luminaries as they discuss this groundbreaking treasure reserve strategy. And th this is uh, on February 3rd, uh, between 1 and 6 p.m. EST, overview of Bitcoin corporate strategy and operational consideration. Uh, the first one, uh, I think is, yeah, Bitcoin micro, macro strategy, a review of Bitcoin as a treasury reserve asset and various macroeconomic factors driving its adoption by corporations, and institutional investors. And as you know, Michael Saylor, uh, the head of uh, micro strategy um, and, and you know, in dominating the, the boardroom, of course, or the votes in, in MicroStrategy has bought approximately $1.2 billion, if I'm not mistaken, um, uh, worth of Bitcoin. And now it's worth around uh, more than $2 billion, something more than two point something billion dollars. Then we have next uh, Bitcoin uh, corporate strategy, a review of ways in which corporations can integrate with the Bitcoin monitor net network and the advantages of different strategies with Michael Saylor. Then with Fong Le, the president and CFO of MicroStrategy, Bitcoin finance considerations. Uh, so there's, you know, different like aspects, Bitcoin legal consideration, Bitcoin accounting. All right. Um, 
what I want to go, uh, I want to change it uh, a little bit into the, not technicalities, but a little bit more analytical. I loved, you know, the analysis of uh, Yasine Elmanjra. He's an analyst at Arc Invest, you know, from with Cat Wood as CEO, on-chain data, a new framework to evaluate Bitcoin. And, you know, I loved how they broke this down, you know, to give you a better overview and insight into how uh, Bitcoin uh, within its different uh, aspects can be analyzed, uh, broken down and, and, and assessed uh, also for the future. And it was co-authored by David Puel. David is a full-time cryptocurrency on-chain analyst and market researcher, best known for pioneering the emergent field of non of, of on-chain of on-chain analysis. David has created original Bitcoin valuation metrics, including the MR MBRV ratio, the Puel multiple and average coin dom dormancy. So there's um, I'm not sure whether I should go over the whole thing but you can read it for yourself it's on arcinvest.com uh subscribe to the newsletter if you don't get it like uh, just like that but i have definitely um uh, retweeted it or shared it on linkedin and and or twitter and what it says here right in the first paragraph it says bitcoin's inability to fit neatly within the framework associated with traditional asset classes has dissuaded institutional investors from adopting it. We believe that instead of considering its unique attributes, skeptical investors have concluded that Bitcoin, the blockchain and Bitcoin, the cryptocurrency, and I would say crypto asset cannot be analyzed fundamentally. And then it goes on in our view, investors increasingly will appreciate Bitcoin's investment merits through the lens of a completely new framework. While conventional analytical frameworks are not suitable Bitcoin offers a unique set of tools that investors can leverage to assess its fundamentals. In the same way that the governmental, that a government statistical agency publishes data about a country's population and economy, or a public company publishes quarterly financial statements disclosing growth rate and earnings, Bitcoin provides real-time global ledger that publishes data about the network's activity and inner economics in the absence of central control, Bitcoin's blockchain provides open source data, its integrity, a function of the network's transparency. Emphasis is on real and transparency here. So there it goes on, you know, investors can analyze open source data, assess Bitcoin's fundamentals, and then they break it down to, you know, for all stakeholders and observers, network health, that's the layer one. Then it goes to layer two for long-term holders and investors, buyer and seller behavior, and please don't trade, don't sell your Bitcoin, just a reminder. And layer three from active managers, uh, the asset valuation, uh, sort of the relative valuation metrics that identify short to midterm price inefficient. And, you know, be, and then before going into details, the data in the bottom layer of the pyramid assesses the general health of the network, network security, monetary integrity, transparency, and usage. So they've really done a beautiful job and access by any blockchain search engine. The data in this layer is raw and straightforward, requiring little to no manipulation. This is the beauty of Bitcoin. It's all transparent, relevant to all market observers. It offers a basic fact sheet about the network. In this blog, we will explore this, this data layer in detail after summarizing the other two layers. All right, so they go on into some details here, but I'm not gonna go into this, but what is important here to mention is that in this three-part blog series, in collaboration with Glassnode, don't uh, confuse it with uh, chain analysis. Who are working, you know, with oppressive regimes like Saudi Arabia, and actually spying, surveilling all kinds of people. Anyway, we illustrate how on-chain data offers a new framework to analyze emerging monetary assets like Bitcoin. As as institutional investors gain exposure to Bitcoin, we believe that the network's three data layers will enhance their understanding of and confidence in its underlying fundamental. Throughout the series, we aim to unpack the power of on-chain data and describe the tools and techniques that should enable investors to turn raw open source data into actionable investment decisions. While we could extend this framework and, ala and analysis to other cryptocurrencies that run an open source software, the focus of this series is in Bitcoin and the Bitcoin network. Important to note, no other network rivals Bitcoins in transparency, which in our view makes it the most analyzable and fundamentally sound network. Now get that, all right? Why Bitcoin? Now, again, Blockchain is not blockchain and Bitcoin, you know, actually created the real, you know, the real transparent, fully verifiable, fully validate, validatable 
uh, blockchain. So the more an open, the more open and transparent a blockchain is, it says, the easier market participants can analyze its underlying fundamentals. The most useful public blockchains offer easy to access tools to audit the networks. Today, any individual can download a Bitcoin client, install a node, and extract insightful network data with relatively low barriers to entry. We believe Bitcoin's auditability, openness, and transparency stem from three of the network's characteristics. And these are important to mention. First of all, Bitcoin has a simple accounting system. It contrasts to traditional account-based accounting systems. Bitcoin's UTXO-based accounting system makes tracking, supply, and auditing monetary policy simple. Second, Bitcoin's code is verified. The implementation of Bitcoin's protocol lives in code that has been scrutinized more than any other open source software code. Third, Bitcoin nodes are efficient. Bitcoin nodes are volunteer computers running software to verify that network's integrity are much more cost efficient than alternative cryptocurrency network nodes. And then they go, you know, into all kinds of details, like assessing the health of the Bitcoin net network layer one, monetary integrity, you know, the Bitcoin circulating su uh, supply, you know, that the Bitcoin protocol has ensured monetary integrity by giving analysts and investors the ability to track Bitcoin's total circulating supply and daily issuance. Uh, you know, the magic sauce also of Bitcoin, which is the difficulty adjustment, halvings, which come, you know, is part, sort of integral part of this whole thing of the total circulating supply, both shown in the charts below. Uh, total circulating supply is a function of historical monetary policy and daily issuance current monetary policy. From its inception, monetary policy has been predetermined and encoded in the Bitcoin protocol, making it completely predict predict predictable and verifiable buttressed by a robust system of checks and balances, Bitcoin's strict adherence to rules-based monetary policy highlights its integrity. And then it says here in, Bitcoin, in the, this graph or chart, Bitcoin circulating supply, as of January 1, circulating supply is 18.586 million Bitcoin out of maximum of 21 million. And then they talk about the Bitcoin issuance uh, in the graph, of Bitcoin issuance, it says as of January 1, inflation rate is 2.06%, and it's expected to cut in half once more in May 2024. And don't forget also there's the stock to flow ratio, the model, you know, uh, stock to flow, the stock and the flow, you know, so uh, it will supersede, it will exceed uh, the, the stock to flow ratio of gold in the next coming years, uh, at latest uh, by the next halving of 2024, where you know the Bitcoin mining reward of 6.25 will be again um, uh, halved in, you know, in, uh, into 3.1225 or something uh, per block, per 10 minute block. And then talk about uh, Bitcoin security. Security is guaranteed, Bitcoin security is guaranteed by miners who ensure transactions are verified and irreversible hash rate as shown below measures the processing power miners use to secure the network from attacks all else equal rising hash rate levels increase the security of the network and then in the graph or chart of bitcoin hash rate it says edge of january one price is 47 percent above its 27 all-time high while hash rate increased approximately 950 percent during the same period hash rate has increased nearly an order of magnitude every two years for the last six years, as shown above, three times faster than the rise of Bitcoin's price during the last five years, supporting the dramatic rise in hash rate, our advances in hardware, and miners' willingness to invest based on the, uh, on the expectation of Bitcoin's price appreciation over time. Interestingly, only in the past few months has the price of Bitcoin surpassed its 27 high, during which time its hash rate has increased by 950%. And then also talks about the minor revenue, the sum of newly minted Bitcoin and transaction fees also is a measure of minor investment in securing the network. Since inception, miners have generated revenue of over 18.5 million Bitcoin, roughly $600 billion at current prices as shown below. And in the chart, a graph of Bitcoin mining revenue, it says of January 1, 2021, miner revenue is approximately $35 million per day. And of course, last but not least, they talk about the usage, uh, invest and active addresses. Really interesting what they've 
dig up. In investors can monitor Bitcoin's network activity and, and usage by tracking the number of active addresses, a proxy for user adoption, in addition to transaction volume, a proxy for economic activity. And uh, what's very interesting, it says here uh, a more, it says here in Bitcoin active addresses as a generative one, the number of active addresses is approximately 1 million per day, nearing its all-time high. And a more granular breakdown, this is really interesting, of active addresses can capture the distribution of Bitcoin in each address over time. As shown below, the share of Bitcoin in addresses holding more than 10,000 Bitcoin has decreased over time, while the share holding fewer than 10 has increased. In other words, it appears the wealth associated with Bitcoin is decentralizing, broadening out. And then uh, they talk about transaction volume since its creation. That's the most important part. Bitcoin has settled approximately $10 trillion in transactions, highlighting its ability to serve as a global settlement system. And just wait, you know, we'll have the second, third layer. Uh, I mean, it's already there. We, we got it already. It just needs to be, you know, scaled up, uh, you know, to European Union, all the other continents such, you know, for example, Strike Lightning Network by Jack Mahler's, where you can instantaneously do global settlement. You don't need SWIFT. You don't need any kind of, you know, rip off uh, Western Union or TransferWise or any kind of central banking systems anymore. You can just facilitate it. All they do in the background is buy and sell Bitcoin. And you, you know, you receive the fiat denominated amount, whatever that is, euro, dollar, whatever, instantaneously without any cost. So it's coming. It's all coming, right? So the naysayers, uh, you know, are going to have a, a <laughs> going to have a great day, I think, once they realize this. When divided by circulating supply, transaction volume can provide some insights into Bitcoin's analyzed velocity, as shown below. Blah blah blah. Anyway. Um, so you can read that for yourself. Let me go to some other articles. There's a good article, Phenomenal World, May 1st, 2020, The Class Politics of the Dollar System. You can find it at phenomenalworld.org. I'm going to put it in show notes. It's just too long right now. And what is also, you know, uh, again, uh, Bitcoin is fuck you money, right? Now, ne uh, uh, after Iran, now Pakistan is now using government funds to mine Bitcoin. That's the article on decrypt.co. And also on, uh, uh, on uh, let me see, there was another article. Yeah, I can't find it right now, but there was another article on Pakistan. The country's economic growth has slowed down in the past few years, but Bitcoin mining could have partially revived that. In brief, the government of one of Pakistan's four provinces has set up two mining farms. It had earlier pushed for favorable crypto laws in the country. Countries like Pakistan and Iran have turned to Bitcoin to revive a failing economy. So read it for yourself. It's all black and white. They're doing it. And it's a fuck you to the central banks, international money for monetary fund, to the criminal convicted president of U European Central Bank, Mrs. Christine Lagarde. So it's really a beautiful fuck. So yeah, without further ado, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, if you really love this episode, give it a like, give it a share, retweet it. Follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is Kevin Davani. You can also find me on Mastodon, Total Bitcoin. Please follow me on, on LinkedIn, Kevin Davani again. My website is kevandavani.com or the Total Connect. Com. If you wish to send me an email, please write to hello at the total .com or kd at kvandavani.com, all in the show notes. Please like it, retweet it, share it, give it a five star review on Apple Tunes or iTunes, on Apple Podcasts or iTunes. Thank you so much again for your, for your, support for listening for your loyal for your loyalty and uh please make sure um that you you know take care of your privacy your security just go you know step by step if you're really totally new if you have you know if you haven't even really bought anything just buy on you know some kind of whatever kyc exchange if you're not you know that far advanced into buying on decentralized exchanges but just make sure you withdraw your bitcoin your sats as soon as possible to your hardware wallet whether it be trezor bitbox zero to uh the most you know paranoid more most air gapped or the cold card wallet by coin uh, coin and uh cobo vault the Cobo Vault and um, uh, Cold Card are both air gap. So the number of, you know, or you can sort of just, you know, if you have small amounts with a mobile wallet, with a big block stream or summer wallet where you can, you know, automatically with a push of a button, uh, of course, there's minus fees, uh, just coin mix and coin join and then withdraw that, uh, you know, or just, you know, you know, pay or, or spend directly from your post mix uh, uh, wallet within your Samurai wallet. So there's tons of materials, uh, tons of educational materials and videos with it be, you know, uh, case, 
uh, Keep It Simple Bitcoin or uh, BTC Sessions with Ben uh, or Ketan, Ministry of Notes. There, there's a bunch of other, you know, educational materials. If you need any kind of support or help in English and or German, a session or, you know, short, you know, guide, tutorial, what have you, one-on-one or group session or live session in Vienna, Graz, any other city in Austria, just let me know so we can schedule this. Thank you so much again. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Telegram, Kevin Avani, or you can find me on uh, on YouTube, Kevin Avani or Total Bitcoin. Thank you so much again. It's all in the show notes and I'll see you soon again. Have a great day.